Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? Wednesday. Another Wednesday. West Coast Wednesday. Yes, we are in the house. Uh, We don't want to take much more of our guest time than we are given. We're super blessed today to have um, one of the pioneers in uh, sports journalism on with us today. We want to get him on. So we're going to shoot him on right now. So please welcome Mr. Rob Parker. Rob, thank you. Detroit's finest. Detroit's finest. That's right. Detroit's finest. What's good? What's happening? How are you guys doing? I appreciate it. I mean, thank you for all the love and uh, the, uh, the acknowledgement and I just would love to chop it up with you guys, talk sports. So we, you got me, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's so, do it. So Rob, I have to ask really quick. I really appreciate your business from Nordstrom. Shout out Nordstrom. How did that shirt work? I sent you. Very nice. You know, I'm a Nordstrom shopper. I okay. love, I love the high end of stuff, you know, not outrageous, mm-hmm. but high end and, and, um, I love it. So thank you for your help. That's how we met. I was shocked that you knew it was me and (laughs) and that you listened to the odd couple. I mean, you impressed me with your knowledge and, and I was like, okay, we got to make this happen. Yes, for sure. I am a huge fan. I've been a fan for quite some time and shout out to Chris too, because he's just as great, you know, Uh, but we like you better. How about that? Don't tell Uh, him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we like to start off the show with some hot topics going on sports related and we'd like to hear your take on them mel what, what do you have up first well obviously right now we've got the nba playoffs happening you know we right. just you just um had a big uh, article that was on deadspin in regards to um kind of the take on the in plays and you know uh, nba commissioner stern kind of like uh or not stern sorry <laughs> Adam Silver. Adam Silver. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm still locked in. I love the 90s and 2000s NBA more than anything. So I I still get locked in. Jordan poster in the background. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you know. Um, But with with Stern and him basically changing the NBA a little bit and possibly making more changes for 22, 23, but the in play is kind of like your take on what's happening with basketball right now in the NBA. I I don't like it. I I really don't. I agree. I I don't like the play in. I, I just. We're seeing it because you're putting teams in that really were ninth and 10th seeds, right? And they get in and then they get demolished in the playoffs. Like really, what is the purpose of that? And then in the playing game, you wind up not having one of the great players in the league, Steph Curry, whose team really finished in the A spot and wind up not getting in the playoffs. So Steph Curry and the Warriors, a marquee organization, they got bounced out because Memphis got another opportunity. So I don't know if that's really what you want to do. And God forbid it was LeBron James and the Lakers who got knocked out. I'm for sure you wouldn't be seeing a play-in tournament again. Oh, absolutely Uh, not. Right, they would have died. And Mm -hmm. now they're talking about doing this in-season tournament during Thanksgiving and Christmas like they do in soccer. Hello, Adam Silver. Do you know that the United States has rejected soccer? So why are we trying to make the NBA look like a soccer league? I hate it. <laughs> I didn't like it either. And to me, Rob, to your point, it made no sense. If the Lakers are the seventh seed, why do they need to vie for the spot they're already in? Right. 42 and 30 was their record. They shared that same record with Portland. They shared it with Dallas. They clinched, but the Lakers have to play in? Made no sense to me whatsoever. I see it more as a money thing than anything it, it else. It is a money thing. It's a money grab because of all the money that was lost because of COVID. You know, they they offering up the network some more playoff games. It's it's a it's trying to make up for lost money, but I just you, you don't want to break tradition too much and have the, your league become a gimmick league. You know, where every year you're changing what we're used to. You're doing different things. You know, they put on sponsorships on the uniform for money. Can you imagine the Yankees having an American Express uh, uh, banner on 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 the pinstripes? You know. <laughs> I just don't think it would ever happen. I don't think that they they want money no. that bad. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And it ruins the uniform. I would never buy a uniform with a with a sponsorship on it. I just <laughs> wouldn't. Yeah. So no throwbacks for you because you see Wish or Swish on some Wish on some of them, different <laughs> brands and that. So none of those will work this season, right? None. The new zero. None. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. But to your point, I agree. I, I thought it was just, it was a useless kind of thing because it's like they're vying for a spot they're already in. It makes no sense. At least have not, if the Lakers go into that spot, if you wanted to really make it competitive for the eighth, let the Golden State Warriors sit on a bye, 
possibly, and let uh, San Antonio and uh, Memphis Memphis duke it out. Yeah. And it, then it play Golden was, State, maybe. It was weird, the know. whole thing. LeBron ripped it, said the person who came up with it should be fired. I don't agree with LeBron a lot, but I think I agree with LeBron on this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with his injury, by chance? Uh, the eye poke. Uh, you know, LeBron gets the Academy Award. He always does. It's always a lot, a lot of extra stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when you watch the replay and realize he ne didn't even get touched, it's even worse. I mean, sometimes I just wonder, like, does he go home and watch that or he just sh shrugs it off and goes, well, as long as I sold it to the officials, that's all I care about. I don't care <laughs> if uh, America was watching it and knows you're a phony actor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, yeah. when he rolled off the baseline in one of the games all the way to the tunnel and got up and walked away, I knew, like, I, I'm a Laker fan. Don't get me wrong. I never was a LeBron fan until he came to the Lakers. Uh, off court, amazing guy. But on court, I just couldn't stand it. And now I feel like this protective mother that's overly protective, that turns a blind eye antics, because that's what we got to call it. And But the shenanigans are there. And, and he gets it because he's so influential in this league that they won't say anything. No, we saw that with the, and we see that with with uh you know the player from Dallas who got fined fifty thousand dollars for breaking protocol. Mm -hmm. And LeBron was at a party, hugged up with everybody. Drake and, and all them. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was no fine for him. Right. Uh but poor Zingas got 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 hit with a fifty thousand dollar fine. I mean, that was double standard. That was as yes. bad as it gets. Now, do you think uh Draymond recently tweeted and he was kind of going after Reggie Miller on TNT <laughs> about the Nards kick that he had uh, given uh, Stephen Adams uh, a while back in one of the playoff tourneys and AD kind of reciprocated doing it last night. And there was no kind of penalty or suspension on AD's part. And Draymond saying, well, mine was unintentional. Uh, AD seemed to be unintentional. Why did I get suspended during a tournament? And AD didn't. Because he has a reputation. And I think, you know, whenever, you know, you're into the rough housing and you've had, a couple of run-ins, they look at you differently. And uh, AD's not in that boat. And I think they're going to give that guy uh, the uh, benefit of the doubt where Draymond, you know, has a reputation. I just, I think it's more of that than anything. Because I feel like, though, Draymond defensively is never a f finesse defensive man. He's a big guy that's kind of flailing, like, if you will. He's very hard on his, his limbers and all of that kind of stuff, very loose with it and doesn't, Seems to be very loosey goosey and not polished as a defender. So I try to give him credit on the fact that maybe it is unintentional. He's just one of those flailing defensive men that just really can't control his limbs when he gets out there in that. In the uh, court. Just been too many of those uh, loose. Oh, okay. Loose <laughs> limbs ship, sink, sink ships, I'm trying to say. Loose limbs. <laughs> loose <laughs> limbs sink ships. <laughs> they take your history into account. That's all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So with the current playoffs happening right now, we see the Wizards are down 0-2, the Clippers down 0-2, heading into Dallas. They lost two at home. Do you foresee any of these guys that are down 0-2 to be any bit successful in the playoffs, like coming back from this? Uh, I don't see Boston. I don't think they're undermanned, and Brooklyn has too much firepower. I'm not so sure on the Clippers yet. I need to see another game. I mean, they've made, they've shot the clip. Uh, uh, Dallas has shot the ball incredibly. I mean, shot the ball almost 60% from the field. That doesn't happen all the time. So everything's going in for them, and they were able to win those two games. We'll see when they go to Dallas. Are they still shooting at that clip? And maybe the, the, the Clippers can figure out, uh, you know, something else defensively that maybe they need to stop switching and just stick with their man and stop, you know, being caught short. Or, or or mismatch, and, and which has allowed Dallas to score easily. So I think that that can be fixed, and that series is not done, but Boston is, is outmanned, and Boston just doesn't have the firepower. Right. And then uh, Russell goes down with a slight ankle injury tonight against Philly, and Philly you know, pretty much takes over and wins that game. But a fan threw popcorn on Westbrook as he was walking through the tunnel. And got uh, highly enraged. And sometimes these fans just get really, really out of control. And with the adrenaline and the emotions of this series, uh, it was funny how they directed the cameras up to the crowd. And the crowd was pointing to the offender. So hopefully, what can they do, even with these protocols in place, even though we're opening up 
What do you think the league needs to do with these fans and the things that they do to certain players? Well, first thing I'm going to say is the only reason that Russell Westbrook was upset is because the popcorn didn't have enough butter on it. But that's <laughs> Um, you, can't throw, you can't throw anything. I mean, you just got to throw those people out. They can't throw popcorn. They can't throw the popcorn bucket. They can't They can't do that stuff. I mean, you, when you pay a ticket, you have a right to boo and, and yell. As long as you keep it clean and it's not racist, you know, or vulgar like that, like, like I'm fine with that. That's a part of the game. But there's a, there's a behavioral code that you have to follow if you're going to be allowed in the games and guys and and girls who don't follow that should, shouldn't be allowed to come in and, you know, and, and, and buy tickets and, and you ban those people for a year or two and tell them you, you're not going to be allowed in an NBA arena. I feel like it's a little bit of, it's, it's kind of like Philly though. I know like the Eagles fans are crazy. I'm only assuming 76ers fans are just as crazy. I feel like that's kind of stereotypical for <laughs> some of the sports fandom out there. You're right, because in the old vet stadium in Philadelphia, they used to have a jail there to house people uh, who went to the Eagles and to the uh, uh, Phillies games until the police could come pick them up. So so definitely, uh, you know, that is Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, they booed Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. That's a tough time. <laughs> If you guys are just tuning in to Girl Chat Sports with Mo and Mel, we have guest Rob Parker on. Rob, I wanted to switch gears real quick. Just a little tidbit on NFL because you are a Detroit guy. And when the announcement came down that Matt Stafford was heading to the West Coast, you tweeted some things about your dislike of Matt Stafford and what his contribution to the Lions has been. And I just want to know what your take is as far as now is he going to L.A.? What do you think he can do over there? I don't dislike Matthew Stafford. Oh, okay. For an overall number one pick who won no playoff games in a dozen years, who won no division titles, and, and people say he didn't play with anybody. Calvin Johnson is the first ballot Hall of Fame wide receiver. And Dominican Sue was drafted there. Uh, there was a number of good players on that team. And I just never saw Matthew Stafford rise to the occasion and carry a team and win a playoff game or win a big game to win a division. Everybody thinks he's going to be a slam dunk in L.A. We'll see. Because to me, Jared Goff got them to a Super Bowl. And Matthew Stafford is going to have to get them there and win one for it to be a good trade. Making the playoffs and losing is not any upgrade, I mean, to me. You already had that with Jared Goff. So, so Stafford's mission to be accomplished in L.A. and the Rams is that he has to win a Super Bowl. And I don't think that's unrealistic. I think that's why you make a trade like this because you think he's the missing piece. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm skeptical because I watched the guy's entire career, and I just never saw those moments. Even when he had Megatron, too, I felt like, God, you they got were this bad. guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. NFL is going to be good this year, though. I'm excited. I mean, we already heard that there's going to have, like, 30 of the 32 stadiums are going to have full fans in attendance. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, being in journalism this long, last year was kind of like the first we've ever seen of this kind in sports history, where – everything stopped, where things were canceled, seasons were canceled, tournaments were canceled. How did you, what did you learn from that as a sports journalist to be able to still make it through and be able to, you know, conduct business as usual? Yeah, it was amazing of what I was able to get accomplished and done without leaving the home and doing a radio, a national radio show from my home every day and TV appearances and the quality being just as good. I was just saying, why, why were we going into the studio before <laughs> trying to figure it out? Because it's unbelievable how good everything was and that we were still able to function and not miss a beat. So it was incredible. Uh, I used that time to really organize my life. I've never been more organized and went through old closets and cleaned out stuff. I really <laughs> like was not going to lay around and watch TV and eat uh, popcorn and, and gain 20 pounds, I decided to use that time, all that time in, into putting my life in order and getting everything together. And I, I, I feel like that was a once in a lifetime opportunity to have time to do that. We always feel like mm -hmm. we don't have time. So I right. feel moving forward now that we can get out and do stuff. And I wake up every morning and I, and I go, I don't have anything to do. 
Like, there's, there's no- <laughs> so, Rob, you didn't get a secret talent. You didn't find any hidden talents that you may have had during this lockdown. Some people became DJs. Some people realized they could be makeup artists. Some people realized they were culinary chefs or mixologists in this quarantine. You well, didn't pick up any other hidden talents, possibly. No, other than uh, you know, I thought I had uh, you know um, mastered watching the Golden Girls, but maybe I, I upped it even. More. <laughs> To watch the show, so uh, my love for the Golden Girls just went through the roof, and you know I went on the Golden Girls cruise. I know I want right to cruise so badly. And speaking of Golden Girls, I got to shout out my friend Rashad because I have to show you this, Rob and Mel. He got me this onesie jumper wow. for Christmas, <laughs> and it says "Stay Golden" and it has squad goals on it. Oh, that's oh awesome. God. And I, that's you know, perfect. and he has the whole DVD box set and he and I both follow Golden Girls memes on Instagram and Golden Girls clips on Instagram. And we're just, you know, fans of the Golden Girls. And we have a favorite episode, of course. Do you have a favorite or are you just kind of? I have so many favorite moments, but the show was so well written. All four of them play so well off of them. The, the delivery of the lines. It is a television classic. And one of my favorite, there's two favorite lines. Uh, one was Blanche. She's looking out the kitchen window and it's raining outside. And she says to Dorothy, she says, oh, the rain reminds me of my first kiss. And Dorothy says, oh, how romantic. You had your first kiss in the rain. And Blanche, being a tramp she is, says, no, <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> who has their first kiss in the shower? Right, right. Blanche and, does. So That's who. Who's your That's favorite Deborah. of the Golden Girls? Dorothy's my favorite. Okay. Dorothy, but, really? Uh, yeah, Dorothy. I, I, I used to love her in Maud when she yeah. had a show. But that the other line awesome. I want to share was, the, and this is the writing. There's there's one episode where Sophia has the remote and she's flipping around. And, and all of a sudden she says, hey, look, to everybody else in the room. And this is a throwaway line. There's no setup. There's nothing. She's just flipping the channels. And she says, hey, look. There's a black guy anchoring the news, and it isn't even the weekend. I mean, it was like, where did that come from? And I thought, that's yeah. why got his best. Yes. yes. <laughs> Shout out to those four ladies because they were great. Yeah. And, you know, I am a huge, huge fan as well. And we were talking about this at the store, but I had to show you this onesie he got me. I haven't put it on yet. I'm sure it fits. But it'll be fitting when I do another Golden Girls Marathon. Nice. <laughs> And I also have to what? give you props, too, because you had those Travis Scotts on. Have you acquired any new sneakers or anything? I was trying to go after a few ones, a few of the Paul Rodriguez SB Dunks. I didn't get those. You have Uh-oh. a much bigger we're moving. than I do. We're moving. We're moving. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, we're seeing something. What are we seeing? Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can. Uh... You're about to do a mile. Is this like crib us. style? <laughs> yeah, it is. Right. I'm just trying to look at a couple. Uh, oh, the ooh, Raging Bull okay. Fives. I like those. Okay. Got um, let me see. These two I love a lot, too. The blue on these and the gray go together so nicely. The threes. Ooh. That's those Michigan threes, aren't they? Is that the no. Michigan ones? What are those? Well, Michigan have the yellow in it. Oh, blue that's right. Blue and gray. So, yeah. Nice. I'm, 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 you know, I'm into the Jordans. I got my couple of things, my little vices, and my friends know. And so if they see something, or I got a sneaker guy in L.A., I'll, I'll wind up getting sneakers. So nice. if that's my vice, I'm okay with it, you know? Yeah, it's a good vice <laughs> to have, not to mention the inflation of the sneakers. Once they're in your possession, how popular they are, they really go up in price. And it's just amazing who would have thought that the sneaker culture of MJ, long since retired, his sneakers would still be carrying on as a as a pop culture icon and fashion. So it, it, it's amazing to be honest. He hasn't played it is. in twenty years or whatever it's been, and his sneakers are still more popular than anybody any player playing now. That that's a testament to him. But I love his sneakers. I really do. Yeah, they they're that's a little great. uncomfortable for me. I can't stand them in for long periods, and they're a little heavy. But I make them work. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that they're good. Some, some of them are. I don't like them all. But What's your series that you like? The ones, the threes, the no, fours? Too thin to me. I, I never okay. ones. All right. Uh, but the fours, the fives, elevens, those are all the ones. Yeah, I'm- those are decent. Yes. Yeah. I just okay. acquired the fire okay. red fours. Not oh, long nice. Ago. Yeah, I busted them out for the Aces game. We went to the Aces game I look this good. past look weekend good. and saw the uh, Connecticut Sun play. We also saw the incident occur with Liz Cambage. 
and uh, Kurt Miller from the the Connecticut Sun. What was your take on that? I know you've probably heard the details of him saying, well, she's gone, she's 300 pounds and kind of insulting her weight and her, her clap back on Instagram uh, about him and then the way she felt and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to say about a woman being 300 pounds. I mean, right. Uh, you're always going to, you're asking for trouble and, and, he, and he found it and rightfully so. You know, I mean, even in jest, I don't think you want to go there, you know? So uh, I don't blame her. I mean, 300 pounds, okay. That's a little extreme. Well, she's also 6'8". Like, she's a big girl. Like, we know. Like, she's and she's yeah. beautiful. She posts, you know, her swimsuit pictures and her Fendi outfits all the time on Instagram. So we all see that she's not that big. But I think coming from a man perspective, and especially the head coach, it's one thing if you're – talking with your peers on court and, and exchanging words with the players. But when the head coach steps in and kind of gives you that, that word, it's a, it's a little bit much, I think. So no doubt. I think that's and, right. That's, mm -hmm. That should be left to players to chime in on to each other on a court, but not for a coach. Uh, it just, Absolutely. It just, I, I think he learned his lesson. Definitely. Wonderful. Definitely. Well, I know you've got a limited time. I just had one right. more question to ask you because, of course, we all know you from The Odd Couple. Um, you've been in the game for like 35 plus years, but I know that you started the MLBbro.com. And I wanted to just ask quickly kind of what got you into that? What's, I mean, I can kind of figure what started it with it, but can you, can you give us a couple of seconds on that? Yes, I appreciate it. MLBbro.com. It is the first and only uh, baseball website, Major League Baseball website that only focuses in on the black and brown players in the league. And uh, I just thought there was a need for us to know more about those players. MLB.com does a great job covering the games and the whole sport. But this is just a closer look. Uh, and it's basically, I, I call it baseball coverage with some hot sauce on it. It just has a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. flavor. Uh, yeah, flavor from, mm -hmm. from what we're used to. Mm -hmm. And as you know, anybody who knows me, I've been covering the NBA since 1987. I've been covering the NFL since 1987. But baseball is my number one love. I've been covering baseball since 1986. My first World Series was the Mets and the Red Sox when the ball went through Bill Buckner's legs. I'm a Hall of Fame voter. I love the game, and I love doing this site. And, and my goal is not only to report on the players and let people know who these great players are, but also to develop the next generation of black baseball writers, male and female. We have a young staff. I'm trying to teach these uh, writers every day on how to cover baseball. And, and, and that's kind of, you know, what drives me to make this happen. I would love to see, uh, you know, these guys and girls like leave our site and go start covering teams and doing, you know, work. Mm -hmm you know, for papers or TV stations around the country covering baseball. So this is my lifelong dream, and it's come, you know, we've gotten great response so far, and I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled by it. Rob, I have a follow-up right. question real quick, and I'll let you go on that. <laughs> Speaking of that, you're including the black journalists in that. What about as far as black baseball athletes? Because I noticed that we have had been since the decline and since the integration of baseball, we've lost some of that uh, luster of having a recruitment, if you will, of black males to play baseball. What do you think the draw needs to be to get kids involved or engrossed into wanting to play baseball or have a future in professional baseball, if they will, um, instead of always pushing the pipe dream of basketball, which is limited chances, and football? Well, that that's part of it. And, and the other thing is kids, some kids just don't want to put in the work. And what I'm talking about is, you know, basketball, you go straight to the NBA, you go from high school or college. When you when you get drafted in baseball, you might have to go to the minor leagues for a few right. years. You don't make big money right away. Football, you play right away. So there's that part. But but we've started to see more and more. Like the numbers have increased a little bit. And we just had at the College World Series two years ago, not last year, but the year before, Michigan had eight black players on the team, which is a tremendous number of black players. Uh, playing uh, Big Ten baseball. So mm -hmm. there has been a resurgence. Those guys are in the minor leagues. They're coming. And we just need to stop these coaches from telling our black kids that they can only play one sport at a time. Like, you got to commit everything to football, everything to basketball. And it's just not true. Kyler Murray was just drafted a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. First time ever 
a, a guy was drafted first in the first round in baseball right. and the first round in football. So you tend to play more than one sport and give yourself options. This whole notion that we only have to do one thing at a time is nonsense. It's total nonsense. And these coaches are selfish and they're taking these kids away from other opportunities and they need to stop. Yeah, I agree. And shout out to Southern University, my uh, school. <laughs> they just won the, the male baseball team just won the SWAT championship back to back there in we a go. row. So uh, for the baseball team. So, yeah, they're out there. I just need to see it more. And I guess it's like the young kids and I have nephews and I have nieces. And I always said, you know, if I ever had children, my boys would be more into baseball. I feel like that's just the sport <laughs> you can run, hit. Catch, yeah, and, and, do all and those things. Parents don't want kids to play football as much. You know, enrollment in football is way down because we all know the dangers of it and concussions and all kinds of CTE. It's, it's I think that you're going to get more athletes going back to baseball. Yeah. Well, I hope yeah. so. And we know we got to let you go. And we really appreciate you tapping in. We really do. We have to do this again when we have some time. No, we will definitely do it. And, and yes, I know you're please. a foodie because you always post you're in Vegas and you go to the best restaurants and you go to the restaurants that I like to go to, too. Yes. So definitely when you're back in town, please hit us up and we can all like go eat or you, we can show you some of the hidden gems of Vegas where there's some good eating places. I will absolutely do that, and I'll see you guys soon. And great job. Yeah. I appreciate the invite. And Thank we'll do you. It, right? Thank yes, you so much, good. Rob. We appreciate you. Take Thanks, care. Rob. Have a good night. You too. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Rob what Parker, ladies guy, and gentlemen. Man. Yes. Yes. And yes. I love, I love that he showed me his sneaker collection because I wanted those Raging Bull 5s as well. He has everything that yes, I want. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everybody that was in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Cassandra Cuno, everybody. Jose, Goose, Arlington, Natasha Gransberry. Um, who else is on here? Lexi. Kelly Foster Thank Mom so is much. in there. Yes. Thank you. Natalie. Thank you guys for chiming in. Those Thank you to Carlos. YouTube yes. And Carlos and those of you guys on YouTube checking us out. We really appreciate Lex it. Lex was in the house. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. We got and Cassandra says her boys are work. definitely... She said her boys are definitely playing baseball in this house. I hear you on that, sis. Because, well, I think part listen, of the reason, too, with this whole pick a sport is because, I mean, I don't know personally, but I got friends with multiple kids that AAU costs, select team costs, traveling costs. Like, it's hard to be able to finance your child doing more than one sport, let alone at an accelerated, you know, rate when they're playing you know, AU travel team because it's like team travel. It's hard to do more than one score because it's financially a hardship for some families. So and yeah. And to your point, Andrew McCutcheon just put out an interview and a, and wrote an uh, article regarding that on minorities playing baseball and saying it was a financial thing on some of the poorest communities that didn't have the resources and that kind of thing to get introduced into baseball. And wow. sometimes that can be the case as well. So Hopefully it changes. Hopefully it switches. Like I said, um, you got some players out there that want to be hitters. So, yes, you do. Yes, yes. you do. Oh, mm -hmm. my mom was in the chat too. Hi, yes, mom. oh Hopefully yes, I saw it. Doreen. Yes, <laughs> yes, Quan. Five you know nine. Thanks for popping in. Lakers in five. I got you with that, brother. All day. I feel the same way. In five. Uh, I think we got activated after, because after a lot, it's gonna be well. It's in always six, been lost. Then... If you know, if you know, <clears> if you know our Lakers. The bubble. We lost the first game in a round. We lost right. the first game in another round. We always lose <clears> the first game. It, it, this is not nothing, anything new. And then we get activated. We're going back to LA, and you just never know. We, uh, I, I definitely see us doing five, especially if Chris Paul. Sad to say, and I'm not trying to use that as an excuse because I want him in the game. I think we still beat him with him in the game, uh, right. but with his shoulder contusion, it's just not looking good for him. And I hope he can return to the court because I want to see that action. Quan's in the chat because he's out of mangoes. Well, hey, hey, uh, Quan, we know you got a great studio there, and uh, we need some new headshots done. Maybe we can exchange mangoes for a headshot. And we need to be in front of our girl chat graffiti thing. You know that's ours, yeah. by the way, yeah. I mean, you I like when the other people post in front of it, but he and does that's say copyright infringement too, Mel. That's I'm about to send out <laughs> cease and desist letters when I see these photos. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my yes. goodness! Yes. So I wanted to, I, I didn't want to bring it on, you know, of course, when um, Rob was on, but I don't know if anyone saw this during the Suns-Lakers game last night, but I dang near flipped out. So the PA guy, whoever does the national anthem, whatever buttons he was pushing, 
You must not have had Quan behind there to do it as the audio, as like the producer, because here's what happened. Please rise for our national anthem. Open up the safe, bitches got a lot to say. You gotta love TikTok for love and for getting that on deck, whoever did that. I mean, it pop off with some like booty bounce music, and then we go into Man, the like how do you confuse like they, they should have put those two around. buttons, they should have put those two buttons farthest away as possible because with the big red sign, national anthem here, <laughs> and then warm-ups here. Like maybe maybe he thought uh, the shoot around was still, somebody slept at the wheel. Maybe he thought the shoot around was still going on. He's about to play another track and then it just enters. I don't know. <laughs> Man, <laughs> listen. Crazy. I, I think it's, it's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> I'm still I'm, I'm still giggling over that. Like it, I just if I was there I would have died laughing. Like I was I've been laughing over that for at least the half the day now because I had three people send it to me and I can't stop laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, in some other news, hey, big shout out to Phil Mickelson. Oh yeah, fifty man. and fabulous, fifty and right. fabulous. Just go, He's goes young. out there and show you, like, don't, don't, don't go, don't sleep on the fifty-year-olds. They're out there still getting champions. Hey, so I'll go, be fifty in four years. You better not sleep on me. We're gonna be fabulous. Are Trust you making? Are you, get that championship, girl. Get that championship. Yes, yeah, like just fabulous <laughs> in your own fabulosity at 50. That, that is not an old age. Uh, and Phil Mickelson proved that, didn't he? Right, so he give did. it up and to him. Of course, so, of course, you know, they've got the usual PJ the match coming up on July 6th, which is going to be Brady and Mickelson versus Rogers and DeChambeau. So I hadn't realized, but I saw there was a huge, like, tweet back and forth in regards to Brady throwing shade at Rogers because, of course, he's got Mickelson on his team. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was pretty entertaining, to say the least. So uh, that's going to be kind of – I'm not a big golfer, but I'm down to watch whatever the athletes come on. Uh, and then, you know, some of the oh, NBA yeah. and NFL athletes come on to play. So, and yeah, that's a new match. It's the match because last time it was with Tiger Woods. So, this time we've got a different match going on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Should yes. be good. And I, I know that. Uh, so, the Knicks won. So, I know Natalie's yeah, they did. super happy. And they finally they put, to. you know, the Trey stuff. They had to. But Trey was getting him that first half. He was shooting like Dame Dollar half court three point shots. So, hey, he Trey was putting on for a while. Rank number 14 in the league, averages 25.5 points a game. The man should have been an all-star. I still say that to this day. And we have to say big ups to uh, Julius Randle right now, too, for most improved yeah. player. And his little son presented him with the trophy in front of the team. It was so cute. Uh, right. And uh, But Trey, Trey, Trey Young is a beast. I don't know why he didn't make the all-star cut. I just am so tight about that. Like, that was an all-star. And that's why you're seeing what you're seeing right now. The greatness. Right. And not to mention, Clint Capella is a big factor. They got a lot of bigs on that team. Gallinari. I mean, they are loaded with the defensive mechanisms. They kind of almost mirror Lakers type of offense with those bigs in there. Um, but, you know, not as solid, of course, because there's no AD or LeBron. But yeah. Trey, Trey Young still is, is uh, a beast in his own right. Like I said, it's. It's good. So we got Memphis and Utah going on right now. Memphis is up by three, and Utah is going to see. Listen, what they if do. Memphis takes another one in Utah, I'm ja gonna Morant. be shock shocked. Ja Morant. That's all I can And say. here's what's funny is that I got family in Idaho and uh, Montana and whatever Utah that they're all Jazz fans. So my mom's family, all Jazz fans, and some of them went to the first game, and she was like, "Oh, and I can't believe they lost." I'm like, "Hey." I haven't never liked the jazz, so it made me a little. I was about to say, nervous. first of all, my condolences to your family yeah, for right. being jazz fans. Hello, I'm sorry really? about that. Sorry to hear that. Very, uh, yeah. My condolences. I know. I know. Secondly, I, know. Uh, I definitely. And so, other ones are at the awesome. game today. So okay. it's interesting, but yeah. Okay. I don't know. All right. I wouldn't go to a jazz game, but actually, I have <laughs> gone to a jazz game with that family, with those family members before, but. I can't remember who yeah. they were playing. Anyways, I guess it's something to do when you're in Salt Lake. Yeah. There's not a whole lot. I mean, there's nothing else they got there. going on. I mean, you got, the, well, you do have the um, festival, you know, uh, the movie festival, but that's right. the only one. Sundance. That's pretty much it. Right. Natalie just said that Brittany Griner went down with the boob dot. Oh. Which is weird because really? I don't know if she, she, I don't think she has them anymore. 
I don't remember her ever getting a removed. Maybe like, she so gave a boob shot to somebody. Her. Maybe she hit somebody. I don't know. She I doesn't, never yeah. thought her to. I'm not going to touch that. Well, she had them removed. She did? I don't yeah, remember Yeah, she her did. Removed. Yeah. I thought it was another yeah. player. No, no, no. Okay. It was Brit Brittany did. Yeah. So I'm oh, interested well, about that. Oh, still kind of hurts. I mean, I guess a guy. Could oh, I'm sure it's still got to be sensitive. Be sensitive. But yeah. yeah. Um, but I am interested to see how this game goes because we, like, as you know, I was at the game on Friday for the opener with the Sparks, which is right. an amazing game. They won. We both were there on Sunday for the Connecticut game. Obviously, there was the Liz Cambage and the head coach Kurt Miller issue that we've already discussed. But the yeah. girls just weren't in the game. Like Asia had a slow first half. Liz had a couple good spots. Derica was off. I mean, the girls weren't there necessarily physically. They didn't look in tip top shape either. Like not saying physically, just I mean, just the 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 sense of urgency in the game was lacking. It just seemed gotcha. like they were just very sluggish. And it seemed like the intensity wasn't there. Except for uh Courtney Gray. She had a bulldog face on her. She was ready to do some work, and she did do work on a few couple plays in some of the quarters. But it just wasn't and that enough. Destiny Slocum, Destiny, Destiny Slocum, Slocum too was ready as a rookie. Yeah, she's just, coming. Yeah. She was grimy. She's gritty. Yes. She's going for balls. She, I, yeah, they shouldn't have lost great. to the Sun. Simple as that. They yeah. had no reason to lose to the Sun. I'm <laughs> they sorry, had chances. The they had chances. You had many opportunities. You actually tied at the half. You were actually in the lead going into the third quarter. You just lost it, and I just feel like emotions ran high with Liz. And uh, it just kind of that transference of energy. But none of them came out there to me really fired up and ready. Seemed like a very slow paced game, very slow moving action. Connecticut Sun were making great plays. They were shooting off the dribble. I didn't see any of that from the Aces. I didn't see any of it. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, we got to do better. You can't go to a finals uh, last season and then come to this. You just can't, you know. So, uh but yeah, I, I wanted us to talk around. a little bit too about what our thoughts were on the process now, because now that we've been in a COVID sports arena, um, I, I found it a little interesting that the, someone had put up in, a, in the WNBA group is that we all saw, um, I think it was Sabrina, Sabrina and Ionescu who was hugging one of the guys on the Knicks. And of course she's in a state in an arena with full attendance hugging a guy that's not math, but then the WNBA is still limiting seats to not only season ticket holders, maybe just in general. And it seemed unfair that these guys get to go out there and play with a full arena. The women are stuck with, you know, people can't go buy tickets for this, for the WNBA games, no, at least here cannot. in Las Vegas. You have to be a season ticket holder or it has to go probably through a third party site. But I'm wondering if that's um, going to change though, when we open up June 15th, a lot of the uh, arenas and stuff are going full capacity, like baseball and stuff. That could change. We're supposed to be hundred yeah. percent by June. You never know. That's just what it is tentatively. I'm now. hoping so. Cause I know there's a lot of people that have hit me up in regards to like, how do we get tickets? Like what's the process? Yeah. I'm like, listen, yeah. I, Shout out to Natalie, who her and Donna they got season tickets, so we've been able to yeah. Kind of, you and know, thank you, Natalie, come over there for and your plus and, one. Yes, and thanks to Jig, uh, uh, Jiggy with the Las Vegas Aces for getting yes. you know a send there for media as needed, which is great. Um, what which we I have did to alternate on, yes, which we have to alternate just because I mean we're not going to every single game. Like everybody still has life. We still got to do things on the side. So it's right. great that we're able to alternate. What I did enjoy was is that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to miss COVID sports for one reason and one reason only. The room and space you get when you're sitting in your chair, you can put your feet up. You got yeah. no one in front of you. You've got maybe one person on one side of you, which is who you came with, and that's it. Like, you've got ample room to just enjoy the game. And you're not having the drunk people yelling and throwing stuff, fights occurring. Like, the Vegas right. Gold Knights had a fight the other night in the stands. Um so that's one thing I'm definitely going to miss about COVID sports. But just so you know, right now at Mandalay Bay, the parking is free. Last year was like $20, I think, for family or people when they went to the game. So that's yeah. one thing, good thing to think about. They also have, um, you're still allowed to have a bag. Like the Gold Knights, you can't bring any bag in. You can bring like something that holds your cell phone and that's it. For the Mariners game I went to, they were like four, four by six inch little clutches you could bring. But for the Aces, as long as it was like, you know, 12 by 12 by six, you can walk in with that, which for me means bring snacks, which I do. Same I as the snacks. Aviators. I went to the Aviators game Saturday evening and it was the same deal. Your back can't be too overly sized. Uh, mask when you walk in, as soon as you sit down in the stands, no mask, you can take it off. Um, 
but they weren't having to the mandate of the clear plastic bags. I know Raider Stadium is definitely going to be doing that. Um, shout out to all those season ticket holders now, because not only do they get a tour, they get to actually now sit into mm -hmm. their PSL seats. My brother is there tonight with his. Shout out to the nice. birthday boy, Vance Horn. He's of out course. there too with him. Uh, and he was like, no, I get to actually sit in my seats and see my seats. And I'm like, okay, you have fun with that. Oh, they my went dad. back out on another tour. Okay. So it's not even a tour anymore. This is that you actually get to sit in your licensed seat that you have for eternity yeah. until the franchise decides to up and leave if they leave. So these gotcha. are his actual bought seats. So this is the thing they're doing on the second half of that. And nice. my parents get to go on Friday to it. Where's Mo? Is she going to go? Does Mo get to go? No, Mo doesn't get to go. Mo doesn't get to go. Yeah, Mo doesn't get to go to these experiences. But uh, I, I am excited for them to be able to experience that. And I well, will be getting it. into Raider Stadium, too. Trust well, we me. need the Threats family to all document their ex their experience and share their pictures with us that we're able to see just how love you know wonderful that is. Um, I did yeah. mention JC did mention that the Aces tickets will go on on sale for the For the public, I knew it. I knew it. So that's have to good. Open it up. Yeah. And then the yes, uh, yes, Aviators indeed. are opening up their stadium on the fifteenth, so their tickets will be going single game tickets. Because again. I had to get those second party because they were not allowing public tickets to be sold. Yes. They were all season ticket yes. holders. So they're opening up and then hopefully our V and the Las Vegas park, park is mm -hmm. still, is still has the pool and you could still yes. buy tickets to be seated at the pool. I was there with the person that we're hopefully going to have on here in a couple of weeks as a guest. So we'll discuss that later, but the ballpark looks beautiful. The pool is open. What did they so say the price can, of the pool was? It's fifty dollars a person, or if you can rent it out the whole time, I think it's two thousand for up to forty people, which becomes like fifty bucks a person. Okay. So I may have All to right, look at that. Yeah. Maybe we'll have good a girl chat sports pool party. <laughs> Let me get my summer body right. I told you I was looking like all oh, yes. the sunshine right now in a swimsuit with my little pocket okay. going on. We're on that out. Will Smith COVID thing, right? You know, I mean, everybody's just, you know, had a little I got to get post-COVID ready for sure. I got to get post-COVID And Cassandra ready. True, the parking was off the chain on Friday. Um, it was but not Sunday, that bad on Sunday. Because there was, was like, you know, people were leaving. There we had a, they had a tournament there. It was volleyball, basketball. They yes, had a tournament that. there. It was also Friday night in Vegas. But mm -hmm. Sunday, people were leaving. It definitely did not take as, as long to park. But be aware, if you are going to a Friday night game in for the Aces, take, give yourself a little extra time to park because Mandalay Bay is a hot spot when it comes to, um, you know, Las Vegas. Yeah. And so you got to figure out if you to go to that one. Yeah, and Sunday, yeah. not to mention, you had like tons of playoff NBA games. So I knew Sunday was going to be a light day. Plus, people yeah. are off of work and they do the outdoor activities. And then with it being only the season ticket holders, it's a small, small option on that. Yeah. Right. And um, I wanted much to... of, what was the capacity? I wanted to ask you real quick uh, compared to uh, season ticket holders on Sunday to Friday, was it less people on Sunday, in your opinion? I feel like there was a few less, only because I think opening day was almost. I get up to capacity of the 2000. I noticed there was a lot more seats that were empty from my, from my um, standpoint, Vantage. looking down mm -hmm. and everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think there was a little less people. And I wish that if you're not going to use your season tickets and they want please pass them on to people that will, because there were so many seats I think that were still open, right? That maybe people right. were holding on to them or, or trying to do too much. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, good point. I know you're talking about the Las Vegas um, lights because I know they actually, their first home game is going to be on June 5th. Good. So Cause they're 0-3 like, and we need them to do something. 0-3 right now. And they play again on Saturday, but they have like $10 tickets, $5 tickets for kids. So like if you can't make a ticket or get a ticket elsewhere, go see the lights. Hopefully yeah. cause they haven't played the home yet. So hopefully just no, they have home and hopefully give them a win. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they will almost get a win. They'll get a win. <laughs> They'll, get a win. <laughs> They'll get a win when they come home. I mean, I think they need to just see us. I think that's what it is. You know, this 0-3 and, and they're starting off on the road for a season makes no sense, but I get it because they're LAFC now. Right, yeah, and basically state, being ba you know, based in a different state. And yeah. City, it's just, you know, I don't know. So. Uh, I like Mel's the birthday video. is June 30th, Eric. Thank you very much. So <laughs> feel free to contribute to the, the cash Girl up, Chat Mel. Sports. Put the cash up, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mel. For you. Feel free to Get contribute birthday, to the Girl please. Chat Sports pool party. Yes, we may have to look into that. Here we go. We got Monisha's too. Just throwing it out there. Because we're no, our own sponsors today, you know? Yes, yes, we were. <laughs> yeah, we were. We were. Um, 
What I will talk about a little bit is so your Dodgers, right? Your Dodgers are in Houston. Oh, my which I know. Dodgers are so awesome. Can you we know, Chris, can we just it? Territory. Of course, we're going to have hilarious. Best unit. And we had a whole Dodger second going for it. Yeah, and we owned you guys that night. Kershaw, not only did he pitch an epic series since 2017, was his last meetup with the Astros. He pitched eight innings. Flawless victory. I think we beat him at nine to two. Yeah, we owned that. We did that. Not to mention, and uh, Steven Sr., if you're watching, yeah, how'd that work out for you on your San Francisco trip? I know we talked about it. You went to the three-game series against the Giants and Dodgers in San Francisco, and it didn't really work out in your favor because now my Dodgers are on an eight-win run, uh, second in the NL West, third in the league. Like, we're we're doing big things. We're coming back, okay? We are back, mm -hmm. baby. Yeah. Despite and all I, the injuries, too. Well, and shout out to my Mariners, who have been doing terrible, mm -hmm. but did just finally break their six-game losing streak, beating the A's yeah. two to one in the series, which is great for us because we need that in our we need that in our division. Although we're still down like four, four and you and guys are below four, uh, five hundred too, so we got to get you. We right still are, too. but coming get back, right getting tight. two out of three was good for us. We got the Rangers yeah. coming up. Mom gets her bobblehead tomorrow. Shout out to one of my boys back home who's gonna. Helping get that bobblehead for mom. So. That's great. That's great. She, she loves her Mariners bobblehead. Yeah, he was in the zone. That. He was totally in the zone, cousin. Shout out to my cousin, Derek Williams, Detroit native. You missed Rob hey, Parker. Derek. You're ah, Detroit legendary. You need to rewind and watch yes. the replay Come after, back and see for us sure. with Rob. Yeah. Detroit's yes. finest all day. Um, But, yeah. I'm loving this baseball season. I'm loving that they announced in June that the parks are going back to the public. Guess what? There's so many games in baseball. I'm not even worried about social distancing on those because not every game is going to be at capacity unless it's right. a giveaway night or some kind of game. Cause I know the, the bears game I intend to go to is Cody Bellinger night with the belly bobble hit. So right. hopefully I can acquire that one if I go down there in June, but right. what, I, but um, to see this, it, it's actually a good thing, but I'm going to tell you something. When I was at the aviators game, I kept my mask on in those stands. Yeah. I still wasn't because playing. They were, they were they busy there. Yeah, it was busy. It was actually a good enough people. They just couldn't close with the uh, Salt Lake City B. And Dog aviators Garden, and aviators were going full capacity when they returned from their um Rogue their game. away games. I think it's like yeah. like June tenth or something like that. Yeah, so that's gonna be bananas. Like yeah, Plus it's yeah. gonna be super hot. You got a packed stadium. Woo! Compared to my it's night where it was freezing cold, I wore a beanie and had to have a thick coat on, which was, it, was it worked out perfectly. Last, Saturday. It was last week it was so cold, but it was a nice night game. Very calming, very yeah. relaxing. Great uh, energy from the crowd despite our loss. Um, it, it still kept us engaged in the game because like I said, Salt Lake just has some hitters over there. They're no joke. They were nice. Well, we had like 60 degrees last Saturday. That's going to be like almost 100 coming this weekend. You know, Vegas weather this spring has been pretty intense. Yeah, I'll take it though. I don't want that 114. I'm just not looking forward to it. No, I know it's uh -uh. coming. I know it's coming. It's like Game of Thrones. Uh, VG update. We are so Vegas Golden Knights. They had one. They were up three one, ready to tie it and close the series out on Monday. Could not do it at home. Right. Back in Minnesota today. They're at the end of two periods, zero zero. Wow. So we just Fingers need one cross, goal. But I think you have just let them back in to this game and you can't do that with minnesota they're a great team no you cannot you cannot and and who was it that hit the goal on the opposing team because that really sealed the deal and that was accidental and the goal fell yeah. and everything but but still it's just like it was just not a great game for them not a great couple power plays could have went in our favor where we were able to score on the first power play but the second one it just was not working out so right. hopefully our nights can well, pull it off we need to get out of this first round Right. So we can get out of that because the two, the previous couple Stanley Cup playoff champions, the Capitals and the Blues, they both got eliminated on on Sunday. They oh. both are out the tournament. Uh, um, Oilers got knocked out on Monday. So really, we need to get this ball rolling. We need to make this win. Um, I'm looking at the aces are at halftime, 45-44. Uh, yeah. I'm interested to see how that goes. Tonight. 
We got games tonight, that's for sure. Sports is crazy right now. You know, basketball games, you got three games a day, it seems like. You've got WNBA, two games a day. It's just like it's a, it's a it's busy a sports time overload right that we need it because we didn't have it during the pandemic as much because everything kind of overlapped. Yeah, this didn't time overlap last year. Much. It wasn't. This time last year, there was happening. nothing. Mm -mm. Just getting started mm -hmm. with a bubble type situation, I think, if I'm not mistaken. We were yeah. getting to roll into that. Mm -hmm. um, I know you had given me some pictures. We're, we're, oh, we're yeah. talking about the, but the WNBA real quick, because um, I just want to shout out, because after the whole Liz and the head coach of the Sun um, issue went down, the Seattle Storm played the Sun last night, and they beat the, they beat the Sun, giving them the first loss. But they also made their own shirts because it was also the one year anniversary of George Floyd. They made him call your senators in regards to the George Floyd justice um, For the bill, bill that's that. in Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Seattle Storm's always, Seattle's just one of those cities too. But um, I just really appreciate them being able to do that. And that was really great. You know, these ladies well, out there it for sure. using their platform, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but your guys' fashion, let's get into your guys' sixth man of the year. Yes, Mr. Jordan Clarkson, former Laker as well. Uh, I noticed the commonality of all of these outfits here right now is that uh -huh. uh, he's carrying a go Goyard bag. I like that. Goyard bag. is one of those infamous Parisian bags. They only sold it at once upon a time at Barney's when it was here. And those bags retail for quite a I bit. I like that money. outfit on the left with the all-seeing eye. That's pretty cool. I, like uh, I do like that. It looks kind of boho-ish to me, but mm -hmm. I, I do I do like it. It looks very hot. Uh, the Versace is is nice. It's it's a little overkill. I'm not big into showing off labels, but I know we're in this culture now of fashion where labels is everything. I do like the Jordan mm. ones that he has with them and the Goyard bag. Again, another common, seems like staple accessory he likes to add on. And I like the varsity style right here and the khakis, bringing me back to the old high school days. And the varsity jacket. I don't are like very that. I don't right like now. it buttoned up though. Like buttoned or zipped up. I didn't mind I just, it buttoned up. I didn't mind uh, it buttoned up because the thing of it is, is if he had a shirt that was too much for the jacket, then it, it hides the whole, it doesn't put the whole look together. So you're going to make it about the jacket with its patches, pop of color with the shoes, a nice accessory bag, the, ca the khaki pants, or you probably have some crazy shirt with design printed on it. And you shouldn't have that. Maybe a plain white tee. If it opened a plain white tee with it, possibly, or maybe a color tee, but I don't mind that jacket button up. That's kind of the style. That's why I'm the stylist. That's why, That's why you I'm are. Cause I also That's don't do stylist. rolled up khakis. Like you're waiting for a flood to come through. Like I, right. I don't Right, no. right. But you wear mids though. So I love mids. I love mids. I'm not I mean, waiting for a flood though. It doesn't dictate the mids. But why does it matter? It's only about this because much that, difference. That, I'm, there are no, short no. people that wear mids. There's tall people that, that, that wear mids. If they're, if they're tall, if they're short with high top, it's like a half it inch difference on a mid to it a high. It cuts their legs off. It cuts their legs off. If you're tall, why are you wearing mids? You can wear high tops and be okay. Because I got a long torso, so I don't I don't have no. the longest legs. So therefore, I, I just have my legs out. And you look long leg to me. And, and all the guys will agree you look long leg in the green dress, especially. So I don't. When I post the pictures, mids. soon you'll see that my legs are not that long compared to somebody. Well, else. I gotta see in some mids to be. I gotta see in some mids to see how this really works because I don't get it. I just. Oh, don't get good it. point, Natalie. We're gonna talk about this, not to change the subject, but yeah, to change the oh, subject. Go for it. Yeah, um, go for it. The Chicago Sky coach had sent you this earlier about filing the complaint against the referee who said so the referee had basically told um, the player, "Hey, go get your boy," and we both discussed this. We need context. We need context. Like I can watch the game. That's I can what I see what happened. We don't know how it was said, who said it, what yeah, race like, the hey, ref get your was. Boy. Or go get your girl. You know, I, I mean, mean, go get your girl. Go get your boy. I, like, I'm I mean, assuming the person was not a person of color or I'm assuming. descent. I'm assuming that. I mean, you would assume unless you'd make, why would you make an allegation against your own brethren saying that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So it therefore, does. again, context is everything. And it's not like he said, hey, boy. You know, that kind of boy emphasis, you know, that has a history of a terminology. Uh, yeah. We don't know. But I, I think, uh, you know, if he feels that way, let him feel that way. Whatever. I mean, we're in a sensitive I just time. Don't want Yesterday this was the anniversary. Be... Right. Go ahead. Yesterday was the anniversary of George Floyd. A lot of emotions were high. Uh, you know, you have to check on your black friends or their mental space to see how everybody's feeling. Check on everybody to see how their mental space. They all saw the video. It can be traumatizing. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, 
you don't know what type of mindset he was in. And he could have taken that context totally out of proportion. Not saying that he did. Not saying that he didn't. But that could have been the case. Um, but, you know, I just feel it's kind of a stretch, Nat, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I understand. I Trust me. You know I understand. I understand when things happen to us or happen to me or people of color or yourself or anyone of another ethnicity that is targeted because of their ethnicity. I know how that is. But sometimes we keep looking for it to catch it when we should not. And if we're triggered because of the emotions of something that happened a year ago, which is rightfully so, that could have been the thing that kind of played with his mind a little bit. We'll see where it goes. I mean, he filed a complaint. See if it carries on and there's an investigation and see what the outcome is. If there's no investigation or it proves that it was just a wrong theory, then, hey, that's what it is. But we're getting into a time now where we have to find a fine line on what is really, really offensive and what is not offensive. It's so gray right now because everything is offending to everybody. So I, I just don't know what you can say <laughs> these days that won't get you in trouble to a certain things. How about just not say anything at all? How about not batter with the raps? Just go How about with just it, you know, just go with, let it go. I, I mean, I you know, and I, I definitely understand the two. You know, yesterday being the day, maybe that triggered some extra feelings on his part. But I really do hope this isn't like a, a thing to come, where we'll be coming into this whole nitpicky on situations that are happening right. in the game. Because let's just get, let's just keep going, players. Let's get on the court. I mean, Brass Jackson, he was, he was yeah, about fouls. He was mad about fouls. Yes. Yeah. And the fouls that were called was 22 to the um, the sky, 22 to the, the 21. To the sky 21. The, I think it was one foul difference. What are you complaining about? I, I just, uh, it was, yeah. it was, where was the bias? Was I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't either. <laughs> that was weird. Um, Stuff gets it was weird. weird. And Diana Taurasi injured. She's going to be out four weeks. So it's yes, interesting right four now weeks. to see with the Mercury's. We know what's happening with the Mercury. Man. If they're going to be able to pull it off because that's a key piece for their team. Sure Even though is. Skylar Diggins has been doing great with them, it's a big piece to be missing. Uh, oh, yeah, that's about that one hurts. Four weeks? That's about a month and some change. So, Yep, and the Sparks we'll lost their rookie the today for the season as well, too. Oh, I know my that. gosh. What is going on with these early injuries at the start of the season? This happened with the NBA too. Like I don't understand what's going on. Well, with the and then you've also got the Olympics so too, and the Olympics are coming. And Kelsey was out, out, out of, uh, wasn't at the game on Sunday because she was on the USA's three on three, which I believe they won. Um, and it's I don't know. Bump it's the Olympics. Just, I don't care about the Olympics. The Olympics is not making any social awareness of what's going on in this world, in this country. Right you know now. what so surprises the Olympics me? And they don't want, and they don't want us to be having our representation of what's going on in the world. So no, bump the Olympics. I don't really care. Well, and that's what surprises me that Liz had a whole thing with Australia, right? And now she just got mm -hmm. named to their team for the Tokyo Olympics. Well, that's good if they want to play, but I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not watching. How about that? I just, yeah. <sighs> I mean, you got to do what you got to do for your brand and everything else if that's what you want to do. But to make those type of rules and to try to ostigate, you've got people from all over the world with all kinds of different things and social injustices going on. And we cannot use that as a platform because you're calling it political. No, it's human rights. So go on it's with the issue. Tokyo games. It's a big issue. Miss me with that. I'm good. Yeah. I'm over it. Uh, but in the world, in the better news, though, uh, Nick, Nick, why can't I ever? A woman K is um, going to be in the next episode of The Shop. So HBO is The Shop. You know, oh, LeBron yeah, James' The Shop is coming back. So I'm really excited about yeah. that. She's definitely in there to talk the re women's representation and how it matters, especially yeah, in great. sports. So, And it's good for uh, LeBron to even have her on to give her such a platform to do so. So big ups to mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I mean, she deserves it. She's. She's great. Yeah, their she their does. families, all the girls are great. I mean, yeah, it is absolutely. good. Absolutely. Uh, before we absolutely. leave, I know we've got some games going on, stuff going on, but we want to make a special girl power to Miss Simone Biles. Listen, this woman just hit something that's never been done by women before, ever. <laughs> like, it's called the Yurchenko Double Pike. She hit on Saturday night. It was the first time that she's competed in 18 months. And it's the first time that any woman has done it in a competition successfully, or even attempted, I believe. It's I only been done by do a crazy quadruple flip on her vacation off of a cliff somewhere with her boyfriend filming. This woman is a beast. 
I am not surprised that she landed this move when she can free fall off of a cliff doing like a triple axel. Well, yeah, she's a gymnast. That's, just, that's, that's what that's just it's just <laughs> unbelievable. But a rocky cliff, like I wouldn't even fathom it. I wouldn't even do a forward dive off of a cliff, like let alone. And I know how to dive. Like this woman is ama amazing. I ain't diving off no cliffs. I'll jump. Amazing. That's it. <laughs> amazing. She is. And what kills me is that people like news media are still asking her, like, you know, she was asked, well, why do you keep performing such just difficult moves? And she was like, well, because I can. Duh. And who doesn't want to challenge themselves to try and do those difficult moves if they know they can? She is the epitome of girl power, black girl magic. Like, this woman is out here not only doing that, but she also Not left black Nike. girl magic. Not black yeah. girl magic. Left, really? left Nike. You're giving left us our props. Are you giving us flowers on the black girl magic? I, always I appreciate give you guys it. Flowers. I love Stop. it. Thank you. No, no, I'm not being she, sarcastic by that. I'm being funny that you said that. I've never yeah. heard you say that reference, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I mean, I've said it during text, maybe not visually or on camera, but here it goes. Oh, gotcha. Um, but she also left Nike and moved to the Athleta, Athleta brand, Athletica. which is a- Athleta, a Athletica. A, sure, whatever. I, I, think I don't think it was Athletica. Athletica. I think it was Athleta, Athleta or something. Anyways, is it woman-friendly brand, which apparently I don't know much about, but- She's, you know, she believes in them as being more friendly for women and women's rights and, you know, kind of the, some things that maybe Nike is accused of not being in regards to women and, um, and, and their take on things. So, anywho, we no, appreciate. I think that's awesome. You know, we always, you know, women, especially the sisters, we always come through with some magic powers. And so this was just proving that. And like I said, I saw her do a triple axel off a cliff free fall. And I, that cliff was super high. And she did that. So it's no, man, no, no telling what this woman can and cannot do. Yeah. And that's the spirit of us. I love it. Uh, we appreciate everybody that checked in today. If you were trying to get to the Rob Barker, uh, Rob Parker interview, he was on for the first 20 minutes. So feel free to rewatch this or go to our YouTube and rewatch it or go anywhere. It'll be all posted on all our social media in about an hour or so. And be sure to share to you guys. Sharing is caring. Subscribe. Yes. We need subscribers. So we're probably going to get off of Facebook. No, I'm lying. But we're going to <laughs> we're gonna say you can only see this on YouTube. And you tell your friends so they can subscribe to our YouTube yeah. channel. We're yeah. also shopping for sponsors, too. Anybody that wants a plug, wants a shout out, wants a banner ticker, wants their cash app up, any of those things, we are looking for sponsorship. So please email us at girlchatsports uh, um, at gmail.com or DM us on our IG at girlchatsports, all one word, or even direct message us on Twitter. Twitter, the same handle. So we are looking for that legitimate businesses. I don't want you promoting anything that's not legitimate. Okay. Not all things, are, le not all things that are legal in Vegas we can promote. Yeah. So. Legitimate businesses. You've got a business, you've got a plan, you want to market it. We are your mouthpieces. We are your vocal boards. Please let us know. And it stays in circulation forever. Yes. 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 Um, and again, just a real big thanks to uh, to Rob Parker again for joining. Thank you, yes, Mo, for thank you, Rob. making I that contact because that was great. We do have yeah. some great guests on the way. We have another one next week. We've gotten even another one the week after. This is going to be some We're hot We're loaded for, for the us. months coming into the summer. It's hot girl summer. Yeah, We're going to be bringing girl the summer. heat. We're going to be bringing those fuego <laughs> topics. We're going to be talking about it. We appreciate all of you guys tapping in, joining the chat. Um, and what can I say? This has been a great, great time. And yeah. to Mel, I appreciate you for setting it all up as far as getting uh, us yeah, ready for the good. show tonight. We're good. We're good. And our Thank correspondent you. Rob, we just kind of stayed on him. So it worked yeah. out. So now we got a friend. Stick to it. Stick to your guns. Stick, stick to, to your, your guns. guns. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. That's the best advice you can give is stick to your guns. But he promised that he uh, delivered. So we really appreciate that. Awesome. that. We love people and that you guys be sure with to their check work. him out. And be sure to follow him also on Instagram at Rob yes. Parker FS1 on IG, as well and as Twitter. at The Odd Couple yeah. and Twitter. Yep. And, uh, and that's it for us. We're going to catch you guys next Wednesday. Same time, yep. same channel. Yep. Same Wednesday. All right, All right. <laughs> Bye. Peace out.